Hi, in this video, I am going to talk about a forecasting technique known as uh, exponential smoothing. So, exponential smoothing is a kind of forecasting technique which uses uh, the linear combination of the linear combination of uh, the past value of the series. Okay. So, let's say we are talking about a time series y t. Okay. So, exponential smoothing uses its past values like y t minus 1, y t minus 2 and so on. Okay, to forecast its future values. Okay, so the forecast, the future forecast, uh, it could be for any number of periods, is a function of the uh, different, um, you know, lag periods. Y t, y t minus one, y t minus two, three, and so on. Now the question is, what should be the weight? Okay, so what should be the weight attached to y t and what should be the weight attached to y t minus 1, y t minus 2 and y t minus 3. Alright, so when we talk about linear combinations, some, uh, it's nothing but, uh, you know, um, uh, some constant multiplied to the, uh, the lag uh, time series and then sum over it. Okay, so st, if st is the forecast value of the time series, it's a linear combination. Uh, so linear combination, nothing but some constant and then multiply it to the time series. So y uh, alpha 1, yt, alpha 2, yt minus 1 and so on. Now the condition in exponential smoothing is that alpha 1 should be greater than alpha 2 greater than alpha 3 and so on. That means with time, uh, the uh, the weight associated with the time series should go down. So what is the logic behind it? It. The logic behind or the intuition behind it is that uh, the nearby time series has more effect than the ones which are farther away from the uh, current period. So if you look at this time series graph, okay, this graph and, and let's say this is the current time period and you want to forecast for the future. So most likely their values uh, very near, uh, close to the, you know, the current time will have more impact, right, or, or, or that pattern will be more likely to be seen in future, right, not the ones which are farther away from the current time period, right. So the weight assigned to the lag values should decline over time. So that's the point here, right. So the uh, weight should decline over time. That's the, uh, you know, logic behind, um, you know, um, ensuring that uh, alpha 1 is greater than alpha 2, alpha 2 is greater than alpha 3, uh, and uh, that uh, pattern is uh, followed. Alright, so in exponential uh, smoothing forecasting technique, it is ensured that the weight assigned to different lag value is geometrically declining or it has a geometrically declining weight, okay. So how, how is that achieved, okay. So the general form of an exponential uh, time series forecasting model is, is like this. ST is equal to alpha yt plus 1 minus alpha ST minus 1, where ST is the forecast value for current time period, forecast for current time period or maybe you can you can call it as tth time period okay similarly st minus 1 is the forecast for t minus 1th time period okay so the forecast for current time period t is a linear combination of the realized value yt and the forecast for previous time period okay so alpha is is a constant okay is a smoothing constant is it lies between uh, 0 and 1, okay, so it's a fraction, so it, it lies between 0 and 1, and um, so, you know, it's given yt, the, uh, the weight assigned to yt is alpha, and the weight assigned to st minus 1, and remember st minus 1 is nothing but the forecast for previous time period, and the weight assigned to it is 1 minus alpha, so that when you actually add alpha minus uh, 1 minus alpha, you actually get 1. Right, because this gets cancelled and this, sorry, this is one. Okay, so the weight one is divided between yt and st minus one. 
Similarly, st minus 1 can be written as alpha yt minus 1 plus 1 minus alpha st minus 2. That means it's a linear combination of the previous lag time period, which is a realized value, and the um, you know previous to previous um, forecast value, which is st minus 1, st minus 2. Okay, and so on, right? So st minus 2 can be written as alpha yt minus 2 plus 1 minus alpha st minus 3. All right. So when if you substitute st minus 1, so if you substitute this uh, term over here, okay, so what do we get? So st equal to alpha yt plus 1 minus alpha, and then in place of st minus 1, we are sub uh, you are substituting you know the right hand side down okay alpha yt minus 1 alpha yt minus 1 plus 1 minus alpha st minus 2 and when we open up the bracket we get alpha yt plus alpha 1 minus alpha yt minus 1 plus 1 minus alpha square st minus 2 now you can you can you can put st minus 2 value here and and see how this uh, you know, expression is evolving over time and you can go on till infinity, till the time you have, uh, till the uh, number of time periods you have in your time series data. All right. So to generalize it, we can write it as uh, like this: st equal to is sum of uh, summation of i equal to zero to t for t time periods, alpha multiplied to one minus alpha to the power i. Okay. I can see you know this is alpha then alpha minus 1 minus alpha and then next will be alpha uh, multiplied 1 minus alpha square and then alpha um, um, and, and, and so on. Alright and then multiply to yt minus i that means you know it, it starts with yt and then yt minus 1 and then yt minus 3 and so on. And the second term will be 1 minus alpha so which, which takes care of this part. Okay. 1 minus alpha to the power p plus 1 and then uh, st minus uh, capital T, capital T is the number of time period whereas st is, is denotes the current time period. So small t is current time period and t is the number of time period uh, for which we are doing the, uh, we, we have the data. And then uh, minus 1, okay. So uh, we, are, we are not deriving the entire expression but yes if you put st minus 2 over here and, and, and you know you gradually see this expression evolving. So this is just a general form of the exponential time series model. So the only parameter or the only constant value um, um, so it will be wrong to say parameter it, it, it's, a, it's a constant value is, is, is the alpha the smoothing parameter or the smoothing term. The smoothing constant. All right. The exponential time series model has uh, some advantages and some disadvantages. It's very simple to use because we're not doing any estimation per se, and uh, it, it's simple over the ARMA class of model. If you go through the ARMA class of model, it is a lot more complicated. There are a lot of selection to be made, statistical tests have to be performed. Uh, and so on. So there is no decision making to uh, decision to be made uh, unlike ARMA class of models in exponential time series models. So it's easy to uh, you know um, use exponential time series model for forecasting, um, and um, you can always uh, update the model quickly. Okay, unlike ARMA model, which takes a lot of time. However, there is a problem with this kind of models. Um, the problem is that it these models may not be optimal okay given the simplistic nature or over simplistic nature of these models this uh, the output from these models may not be uh, highly accurate okay so that has to be uh, the one has to be a bit careful while using these models uh, to ensure that uh, it is not overly uh, suboptimal okay and this type of models are useful when uh, there are like so many forecasts to be done in a very short time, okay? Um, there, there are just so many time series and you, ha you, you want to do it uh, in one go in a very uh, less time, then these models are very useful. It cannot go for ARMA model uh, in, in, in such scenarios because it takes a lot of time. Alright, 
So here is uh, there are two questions for you. You can try this out. You can you know um, you, you can find it out by yourself. So the first question is and which is often asked in interviews is how is exponential uh, smoothing model different from ARMA class of model uh, in terms of the estimation procedure? Okay. So in terms of the estimation, how is exponential smoothing different from ARMA class of model? The second question uh, which is uh, often asked is how does exponential smoothing handle trend and seasonality? Okay. Well, just to give a hint, there are actually certain class of exponential smoothing models which can handle trend and seasonality. You can read more about it. So you can do uh, some sort of search, Google, you can do, you can find it out on Google. Um, there are a number of, uh, you know, um, uh, models related to the exponential smoothing variation of these models which can handle train and seasonality. So these are two questions for you and please subscribe to our channel. Uh, thanks for subscription. Uh, until next time. Thank you.